Welcome to the 2021 Australian Open Men's Singles Final. Would you please make welcome our fourth seed in the second Grand Slam final from Russia, Daniel Medvedev. He is our top seed, the world number one defending champion, looking for a record ninth Australian Open title. Please make welcome from Serbia, Novak Djokovic. Huge reception for both players. Just listen to that Serbian support. Let's get down to John Fitzgerald, who's courtside. I believe, Fitzy, you can hear me right now. What an atmosphere. Yeah, this this is as good as it gets, Mark. And, and these are special moments, aren't they, in, in our tennis world. The, the finals of the Grand Slams, there's four a year. And as an Australian, when players walk onto the court, in your home slam this is a special moment it, it really does um get the you know the the heart rate up and and the emotions rolling I look i look at novak and i think how can you play tennis this well sometimes and two years ago i, I don't think i've seen him play better against rafa in the final i didn't think he could play tennis that well but i did think at the start of this tournament pitch that if there was one play that may give him a shake this year it's Medvedev. It's the guy across the net tonight. Ah, we can. He's going to do the contest first. Daniel, this is Hugo. He's going to do the contest first. Gentlemen, we take a picture with him and the trophy after the contest. Just three reminders. 25 seconds between the points. The clock starts after I've announced the score. Towel boxes, red and blue. Nola, you go for blue. Blue, red for you. And last but not least, if there's a tie break in the final set, it's up to uh, 10 points. You got any questions? No? So you wanna, we are ready to ask Novak if he wants, or Daniel? A and Z or the players? Novak, A and Z or the players? A and Z, okay, ready to go, Hugo. Here we go, and it's A and Z. Surf? Okay, we take a picture, you turn around please, you turn, turn around, turn around. Okay, this way, this way, perfect. Nicole. Nico Hellworth, the first German to ever take charge of a, a men's or women's Grand Slam final. Congratulations to him. And Brad, silver is the most precious commodity tonight. Not gold for once. Yeah, that trophy is a beauty. They've kept it well shined in silver. What a tournament it's been. So many twists and turns along the way. But ultimately, these two's routes through converge here in the final. His second final, of course, of a major. Came up short in five epic sets in New York against Rafael Nadal a couple of years ago. Here's the tail of the tape. Currently ranked four, of course, will push on to world number two if he were to win tonight. The 25-year-old from Russia, of course, has made his base in the south of France with Gilles Savara, and that has been uh, perfect for him. Pospisil in the opening round, Kabeas Benya in the second round, Krajanovic in five. A couple of sets there were probably uh, the roughest that he's had in the tournament, just mentally. Mackenzie McDonald had a great tournament here, getting through to the fourth round, but dispatched in straight sets. Tough match, it looked on paper against Rublev, Three but he minutes. wore him down before that wonderful win, of course, in the semi-finals against Tsitsipas. It's been uh, the toughest route through at a major ever in terms of sets lost for this man. But he's never won a major, of course, without dropping a set. So I'm sure that's not going to bother him. The most important thing for him, he comes into this men's final fit and healthy. He said he felt the best that he's felt the entire tournament after his semi-final ominous signs for Medvedev tonight. Look at that, $145 million in prize money. But he wants something tonight that money simply can't buy. 
Shardy in the opening round. The American, it was a good tussle. Hot day that day as well against Tiafo Fritz. That's when the injury seemed to occur. And the match was getting away from him, but he won it in five. Raonic, the big server in the fourth round, dispatched him four, as was Zverev before the uh, man of the tournament, Karatsev, who came from nowhere. In fact, he didn't come from nowhere. He came from Doha in qualifying to make the semi-finals in his debut. Before he was there, we see the Sir Norman Brooks Challenge Cup. And Novak has already won eight times and has yet to lose in a final here. Outstanding stat. Bewildering. It is bewildering when you think about it. Eight finals, eight titles, as you mentioned, Mark. I and mean, if he's made it to Sunday, he's he's won. That's been uh, four three in the head to head. Brad, just quickly, what do you think Medvedev's got to do? Apart from obviously play well, give, give me one thing that you think he needs to try and do better than he's maybe done in the tournament so far. Well, I don't know if it's one thing for me. I, I think what it's going to come down to is how he handles the pressure moments in the match. We know how Novak has handled pressure moments. We know he's comfortable given his history and how many times he's been in these kind of positions. I really think that Daniel Medvedev, given his previous one final is going to be more comfortable Ladies tonight and, and we saw that head to head he's got some wins over Novak I think Novak he's going to come in tonight and on this surface he's deserve. actually going to feel pretty comfortable and confident it's going to make seconds. a big difference how he goes early on but it's also a long match and uh, I, I think in the end like I said from the start how are you going to perform when you get to 30 all if you get a break point are you going to be able to step up and play those points to your max capability and take those points away from Novak Djokovic who's probably the greatest counter puncher of our of our era maybe of all time and you could add into there one of the if not the best defender of all time. And Obama. It's going to be special. Russian looking at following Yevgeny Kapelnikov's shoes. I see a winner here, a couple of majors. Safin a winner here as well, a couple of majors. Medvedev looking for his first. Novak, of course, looking for his 18th to close the gap between his two great rivals, Roger and Rafa, who are equal on 20. There is history to be made tonight. After all the work that has gone in by this team here in Australia to get this final underway, to get the two weeks of the Grand Slam and the tournaments prior to this played completed. It's so great to have fans here as well, adding to the atmosphere. And a night where soaring dreams and fading hopes will be felt in equal measure. Ready. Play. His hundred and first ace. Averaging 16 a match in his career, he usually averaged around five. That is how quick the conditions have been in Melbourne. Yeah, that's not a statement about Novak necessarily stepping up and serving much bigger than he has in previous events or as we've come to know him it's it's definitely an effect of the, the surface here this year the surface has just been playing way quicker lending itself to much better serving we know he's always been an incredibly accurate server you add the pace of this court and it's just benefited him a ton This is a clean start 
he has settled quickly. Let's preserve. Game. Lovely start, lovely rhythm on serve. First game. Pitch, you know, the reason he's settled so quickly is not is not because he's a normal human being it's abnormality to be able to do that in, in a situation like this yes but he has experienced it eight times before so obviously that helps but i don't know how you settle that quickly when so much is on the line i guess it's just that he's done it so often before he, he looks like he's uh, in a practice session with his body language and, and, and there's a big atmosphere here be interesting to see how medvedev settles well, he's made a few waves down in Australia, has Novak, but he'd rather lead an army of fellow believers than carry those of indifference, as he's shown over the years. And he certainly has many of them in the stadium tonight who believe in him. Does Medvedev believe in himself? Interesting, Brad, I was watching Novak practice. That in particular was something he was doing a lot in practice, taking the, the angled ball up the middle and hitting it back inside out with his backhand to the forehand of Medvedev. Yeah, looking for the forehand of Medvedev tends to be the weaker side. Uh, he can throw in a few more airs off that side. The backhand is a rock. Novak right now probing, looking for that side a little bit and doing what he always does, making his opponent play and comfortably into those first three points, four points. It's a big difference tonight for Medvedev is how many balls are going to come back. He's almost 15, at 50% of his first serves being unreturned in the tournament. There'll be precious few of those tonight. Two Please. break points early on for the world number one. First one erased. 13, 14. Big forehand down the line. Medvedev finding the inside of the ball and that sliding away from Novak. The serve plus one is going to be really big for him because Novak's going to make so many returns. Absolutely brilliant. 
We talk about his defensive game, don't we, as, as maybe being unmatched. Certainly in our generation of seeing the defensive shots come back that you don't expect to come back. He's better than anyone we've seen, we've seen in recent times and maybe ever. But that may be the biggest issue for Medvedev. His serve may not get the free points tonight that it normally does. How will that affect the outcome? We, we've already seen something in his first serve this game. Out. It definitely seems right now that Medvedev's feeling the moment a little bit. The matches that we've covered over these two weeks, we just haven't seen him miss those kind of returns or make the errors that he made in that first service game, really. Well, the advantage of staying deep is that he generally gets a lot of balls back in a play, but with somebody that is as accurate as Djokovic is at the moment, he's not able to lay a racket on the ball. His wife, Daria, his coach, Jill Svara, they'll be a little concerned. And a little airtime for Novak Djokovic and a bit of space between these two early on. Three love already. Well, that was perfection, wasn't it, Fitzy? One thing, uh, Pets, that I'm, I've just noticed too is that there's a little bit of bandaging under the, the right uh, shorts of, of Medvedev. He's got, um, he's got some bandage there leading up north of the knee, above the knee, and it may not be anything. He might just have a little bit of stiffness, a little bit of wear and tear over the, the last six matches, but it's there. It hasn't affected him in terms of his movement so far, but maybe something we can watch. Well, it was all smiles before the match. That man smiling a little broader right now. Serbian fans are good voice, as they always are, adding to the atmosphere the fire and embers of another day here in Melbourne as the sun sets and the lights are most definitely on for the world number one. He's gotten off to the perfect start, that's for sure. We've all hit tennis balls in our lives uh, extensively, and we know how difficult it is to time the ball almost perfectly from the start. He hasn't missed one ball. And, he, and the ball pitch, as you know, comes out of the middle of the racket, like inc incredibly so. It, you know, for most tennis players, they wrap it around the strings. They, they hit the frame a few times in the early stages. Not this man. I know exactly what you mean, Fitzy. That's why I'm talking about this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is an important hole coming up here for Medvedev to get some traction in this final. Yeah. He's just got to get himself settled down. And three out of five set tennis is long. It's, it's a marathon. So even if he can't get the break back, 
He just needs to establish himself in the match and get comfortable. message down the other end of the court where he's drilling the ball. That's what I was just thinking as well, Mark. I mean, he, he might have well posted a sign that said, hey, I'm going to hit every ball to your forehand. I mean, Danielle right now can basically just cover that one side of the court. But Novak definitely dictating terms out here at the moment. And one thing that was interesting when you look at some of the data coming in and you can see the relief, it's just one game and he needs to win a lot more than that. But that felt crucial to Medvedev is he's actually come into this final, the Russian, hitting more backhands than forehands in the rallies, which you kind of wonder why his opponents would let him get away with that. You know, I think part of that is him creating situations where they feel they're, they're forced a little bit to play to the backhand. Novak's not going to be uncomfortable going backhand to backhand, obviously, but he's clearly targeting the forehand more. It's also been another part of the change in strategy for Novak to accommodate the quicker conditions. He's been going down the line with his forehand more than going cross court. He's taking bigger risk, hitting it faster than he's ever hit it before. A little freebie. Yeah, Mark, and that, that's that, as we've seen that develop through the tournament, is, is another recognition of the speed of the court. He knows there's a benefit from playing to that position with the court. The ball gets there faster, it goes through the court, you can do more damage playing down the lines on this faster court. He's recognized that early on, and if you look at his stats match from match, he, he's, just like you said, higher percentage of balls down the line than cross court is, is very uncommon to see in general. Second time we've seen him going to the serve and volley here as well early on in the match. that are so important to actually win. Not just compete in and end up losing, but to win those types of points. Some pressure being exerted on Novak's serve.
Well, what a start for the neutrals. A break early for Novak, a break back for Medvedev. We're on serve. That was a great dig. He probably shouldn't have got a racket on it, but the smash from Novak was mishit, and it was a tremendous defensive lob. He was in all sorts of trouble. Couldn't really go down the line then. It felt like too big a risk, and Medvedev was waiting cross court. And we've got drama already. It's, it's always amazing to me the one shot that Novak seems to struggle with on his timing is the overhead. He has such impeccable timing on every other ball in his game, and yet on the overhead, he seems to just struggle. Brad, do you that think he that both feet off the ground? There. Brad, do you think that's come from the problems he had in his serve early in his career, possibly? And his wife, Daria, delighted with that. Novak smash just showing a bit of that fallibility, Brad, as Fitzy was saying. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Fitz, uh, that, that inconsistency on the overhead, I, I, it's inconceivable to me that, that with the rest of his ball striking capability that he does struggle to the degree that he does on the overhead at times. Sometimes he'll hit it great, but it's the they one do. stroke where I, I just think he doesn't have pure confidence in that swing. that Novak used a lot last year in Sydney in the opening set against Medvedev in what was, for my money, the best match that we had on the men's tour in the ATP Cup. But these courts are much slicker. Look at this ball, it just skips through. It does not stop. I'm just not sure it's going to be as effective tonight. I don't think it's a bad play necessarily, regardless of the surface, just because we know Medvedev's not particularly comfortable once he gets up to the net. He's pretty dang comfortable in that midcourt, getting the ball up and down. Yeah. 14 left. Champion came out, threw some punches Three. early. Game's old. Kind of rocked his opponent a little bit, but Medvedev's righted the ship and he's been able to absorb all that and got himself on equal ground with a little bit of a lead here. It's a bit of an indication that Medvedev is, uh, he's more than matching him right now in the last three games, anyway, from the back of the court. And, you know, maybe Novak feels he's got to go for something a little different here at the moment. Yeah. 
30 lap. Fourteen, fifteen. Ulysses Benio, who's been looking after Novak's oblique stroke, ab issue, fantastically well. Argentinian from Cordoba. It's an ATP event there at the moment. Good to see David Nelbandian back coaching. Oh. He's working with uh, fellow Serbian, Kekmanovic. Looking in good shape as well. This is fabulous seven games between these two. Goran Ivanovic looking on, happy with that hold. 4 3, Djokovic. Four games to three. Well, the last rally showed the value of that forehand down the line again, Brad, that he gets good depth on it with the pace. Still had to play one more. Yeah, we're getting right now what we expected out of this match, those first three games. Medvedev looked a little shell-shocked coming out at first, but he settled in. I think we're going to see a lot of extended rallies. Interesting, like uh, Fitz said, that from a tactical standpoint, Novak's been the one that's, I don't know if the term bailed is right, but he's he's opted out of those longer rallies with a short ball. Medvedev, who won his first title in Australia in Sydney it was one of those sliding door moments actually he was uh, supposed to go to Auckland he wanted to go to Auckland he was next in and his then girlfriend now wife had a visa for New Zealand but nobody pulled out so he ended up having to play qualifying in Sydney got through qualifying ended up winning the title there beating Alex de Manure in the final seven five in the third you can stick your spreadsheet somewhere else when it comes to planning, Brad, on the coaching it's side. Literally the, the luck of the draw sometimes. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's tough, you know, trying to decide where to go when you have multiple weeks like that to choose from sometimes. And you have a random situation like that that occurs. And it really was the start of his climb towards the top echelons of the game. Sydney, I witnessed the, the first time I'd really seen him play live, and, a bit of him, and I thought, nah, the, the technique here is it, it's okay, but it looks like he's going to miss too much with a flat trajectory. Was I wrong? He, he, he doesn't miss either.
unflappable. I know he lost that point, but his attitude tonight, I think he's matured 13, over the last couple of 15. years. He, he, he does fire up. We know that Medvedev. He can get a little uh, involved with the crowd and the things around him, but tonight he looks zoned in. Unflappable so far. Yep, that's a great observation, Fitzy. 14, 15. Yeah, she lost to Marinko Matosovic in the first round of a challenger prior to Sydney. I mean, that's how quickly your fortunes can change in tennis. Huge arguments with his coach, Jill Safaro, who's obviously here, seen him through the good and bad times before they put it together in Sydney. Game. But the change occurred for the Russian when the pain of staying the same became more than the pain of changing. And he did have that corrosive Four attitude, but he also has this, which solves a few, few problems. Simple but effective, Brad. I like his service motion. Very simple. Pretty classic in a lot of ways. Gets good extension, uses the full range of his six foot six height. Great defense that time from Daniel Medvedev. Djokovic then took a real good look at his box uh, with his eyes wide open. He's, he's, he knows he's got a serious match on his hands here at the moment. Look to them for something. Not sure anything was forthcoming. threw his hands in the air as if to say, yeah, it's about time you missed one. 15 on. It's a little, it's a little like playing himself in the mirror, I feel like. This, Dan Daniel Medvedev is as close to a Novak Djokovic as there is in our game. It's, it's the latest installment or the, or the next, the sequel to what we've seen in Novak Djokovic for so long. So you can understand his sense of frustration. Everybody else is frustrated 13, when they have to play Novak. 15. Champions rise to the occasion. 14, 15. Or as the Navy SEALs say, sink to their level of training. But those were two perfect points.
little shake of the head to his camp there just sort of say this is going to be extremely hard work. He doesn't mind that. He knew that coming out. Let's be honest. Yeah. He was ready for the pain. You have to be in this kind of a match and against this kind of an opponent for both of them. They had to know that this was going to be a match filled with some some grueling exchanges from the baseline. How well he has come back after a blistering start from Novak. Time. Which made him happy. Is a beacon of hope for Serbia. Novak Djokovic with his exploits over the last decade plus, revered as he should be. And his nation's second empire building began at Wimbledon 2018. Of course, beat Kevin Anderson there after his elbow injury, fluctuating fortunes in 2017. But after that win, he won four more straight Grand Slam finals until he lost to. Rafa last year at the French. Out. I want to go back to something that Fitz was saying earlier also about uh, having seen him play in Sydney and and thinking uh, he plays a little bit flat. He doesn't have enough margin. Out. But one of the things I've been so impressed with Daniel Medvedev is that I think he manages risk on the court extremely well by creating space for himself from the bounce. He very, very rarely confronts the bounce on the ball. And in doing so, he allows himself the opportunity to make a full swing on virtually every ball, which allows him to create more control despite the fact that he hits a relatively flat ball and it really limits his unforced errors. And that's one of the reasons that we see him playing a little bit deeper in the court, but he accepts and recognizes that that depth means he may have to do a little bit more running. He has to carry the ball a little deeper through the court and he makes those adjustments and he limits his errors in the matches. And let's be honest, the most basic fundamental thing in tennis is make fewer errors than your opponent. Please. Upping the ante on a couple of these balls. The, the positioning on that ball, the drive to the front side, that could not have been more picture perfect. Novak saw the future there, anticipated it beautifully. Was that anticipation or was did he know that going into it? I, I was thinking to myself, he, he did his homework. Never had any intention whatsoever of covering the line there.
out. Stage of the set for the world number one, six five. No question that he has the majority of the support in here right now in terms of the volume, and that will be music to his ears. He's played in enough away stadiums, I'm sure, to last a lifetime. opening set between these two so few unforced errors Novak showing a little bit more in terms of the extra little shots the bit of variety with the drop shots that he's brought into proceeding so far to try and keep Medvedev off balance well it's four hands that generally win you big titles just the one backhand winner so far between these two who both have fabulous backhands of their own but it's the forehand that does a lot of the hard work as the hard work of the last 10 months comes to a conclusion tonight here in Melbourne under the gunmetal skies and the big artillery of the Russian short ball out of it and was able to finish on the next ball but it was that ball right there that set that one up as we talked about earlier with his percentages hitting more forehands down the line than cross court throughout the tournament is Novak coming right at Medvedev. A bullet of a return. And Medvedev did an amazing job to actually recover and put that ball in play. Had a look at this. Would have loved to have seen him run through that instead of going on the slide. and perfect timing his athleticism on the return and then pinpoint accuracy gives him three set points deep hole here for Medvedev Expect Novak to stay aggressive as he has at the start of this game right here. No opportunity with that type of serve. Faster serve of the night as well. Final set point. Seven five. 
not a stat that bodes well for any opponent. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever been 72 and one in anything. <laughs> Don't expect this man to go anywhere. 15. He is a fabulous competitor. Being that fabulous competitor is a prerequisite, though, isn't it? He, he, you have no choice. You, you want to win something like this, you have to be an outstanding competitor. Uh, and I think, you know, I can't say that I ever knew or know, but to win this first major, quite often I would assume would be the most difficult. So you have to put yourself through something very special to win your first. Maybe this is it. Head down. 15, and Fitz, just a note to self. When you're playing the Russians and you get a short ball in the middle of the court like this, stay at home in the middle. Look where that goes. Almost all the Russians play that ball down the middle. attaches excellence to the backhand and it attaches itself to the line big second serve that's been part of the way that he's played since 2018 as well 187 kilometers an hour second serve down the tee see a few of those on the juice side as well let's preserve Phantom let. I just feel the the let cord machine that they use in the tournaments. It's so sensitive sometimes that I feel no one, players, spectators, no one hears a let, and the machine goes off. Out. And the margins are thin tonight, way for thin. And that could be the difference. 13, 14. Well, I don't think either of the players heard of that on that previous play either, and that's an ace. The difference between that being an ace and a backhand error that gives Medvedev a break point. Thank you. 
Well, he's one of the most flexible players out there in terms of his mindset. Medvedev, we saw that in the biggest final that he's played prior to coming here at the US Open. He was down a couple of sets of break against Rafa in New York and then started coming in all the time, very much out of his comfort zone. But it changed the rhythm of the match. He's willing to do whatever it takes, however long it takes. And Novak with a little bit of despair early on at the start of the second. Well, he must be feeling the pressure on the second serve. He's won just 33% and three out of nine so far in the match, the Russian. Out. And of course, that was one of the ways that he got past Djokovic in Cincinnati a couple of years ago. He was down a set and he was facing break points. He started dropping 120 mile an hour second serves. the backhand drop shot up the line. See him here. Nevedev shoveled this ball with some pace. Or this ball, not the most conventional backhand overhead we've ever seen, but... And the Novak, Novak moved so early on the overhead. Nevedev just had to push it down the line for a winner. Well, Medvedev's technique is ugly but lovable, isn't it? It's <laughs> seemingly inadequate at times, but indispensable. But most importantly, Brad, it's effective. What a return. Yeah, it's the depth. It's the depth. Uh, that was 15, off the first serve that time. But 14. Novak has played a couple of beauties in this game off the second serve as well. So maybe that's why the, the uh, stats on his second serve are not great. The depth of the first return giving Medvedev trouble. Oh. Oh, how good is that? Stick that returning game in a museum. It was an absolute work of art. And Fitz, you're, you're absolutely right on the return. I, I'm a huge fan myself of the deep, hard, middle return. Novak employs it better than anybody in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, I reckon he hit four in that game within a meter, almost certainly a meter and a half. And and uh, he, he knows when to step in that extra meter and a half at his end of the court, too really did have a, an attacking mindset against the second serve of Medvedev there. Well, neither tonight are in the perfection business. 15, Just the winning one, but a bit of perfection doesn't go amiss, does it? And this has been a lovely run of points for the world number one. Found the range on that cross court forehand since early in the match. Missed a few in those first few games, but he looked very comfortable off that cross court forehand. Starting to do some damage with it, like that one. in his 
career. But I don't know about you guys, I'm just 15, getting a, a nice little feeling this might end up a beauty. If, we, if, if Medvedev can get uh, a set here out of the first two, so obviously this set, hold on to your hats, I would say. Where is your hat tonight? That's better. I can see it on. That's where Pets, just like so you said on. earlier, he, he sometimes looks awkward, uncomfortable, not as mechanically sound as what we would like from the standpoint of either footwork or the racket mechanics sometimes. That one that was a goofy little jump there on the ball that he didn't need to at all. Establish your feet on the ground and drive your weight through the ball on that. Out. 14, 13. Second set. That'll be just a little bit deflating for the man on the other side of where Novak's sitting right now, having got the early break. He did nothing wrong, really, in his service game. It was just the genius of the man that he's playing. And then a couple of balls long, but again, I think you can also add into that that he feels as though he needs to go with that depth. And so much of this match is going to be oriented around depth from both guys. We know how good they are when they have time. So leaving the ball short, creating time for the other guy, you're going to be in big trouble. Time. isolated islands of reflection for the minute that they're given as we take a look at the hard work that they're basically doing right now almost a kilometer run uh, lots of uh, moving from both in these elongated rallies that they're playing against each other please ladies and gentlemen take a your lot seats harder work for Medvedev as you can see at this ready. stage thank you almost double the high intensity yeah. changes of direction that's just a suggestion that Novak's dictating what's going on in the points. There's visual evidence. Absolutely. Love 15. 24 shot rally. Dictated the majority of the time by Novak. Medvedev working hard to stay in that point. 
please. Out. Please. Out. Fifteen hole. I think as Fitzy said, also those longer rallies like that we were talking about earlier. We know the majority of rallies in tennis end in less than four shots. But it's those longer rallies like that previous one that really play on a player's mind. If you're not winning those extended rallies, the ones that are really pushing you physically. 15, 13. Those can break you mentally. I mean, he is absolutely in the zone on return right now as well. It'll be interesting to see whether Medvedev can navigate his way out of trouble again. Play let's. So there's a lady just... Uh, unfortunately, I think, making some type of protest who is being asked to kindly leave the theatre. Replay the points, 15 -30. They won't be seeing the end of this one. Let's press her. We've had a few rowdy fans here through the tournament. Fitz, do you know those ladies? Bumper, no. <laughs> Correct answer. No, that will feel perhaps a little bit hard done by there. He was right into that rally and all the momentum on his side of the court at the moment as he's in the ascendancy in those longer exchanges, as Brad's just been saying. Listen, some shots early in the rallies here. Just the point maybe it's over. concentration, but he, he's, it's minute, but his level's dropped off fractionally in this game. Big moment. sport is uncertainty and we certainly had that at the start of the match for most of the opening set but this is starting to turn into a dominant performance from Novak the pressure is just unrelenting from Novak that's the thing it, 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 it's cumulative it keeps building and building and building because even the games that you get through and you hold serve he puts pressure on you you have to work for every Please. single point. Out. There's a sharp return. I was actually just 15. thinking, being fortunate enough to be commentating throughout the course of this sort of golden era that we've had. I remember a match that Novak played with Rafa back in 2008 in Hamburg on the clay, heavy, wet clay in Germany. I remember how hard he pushed himself to come into the net consistently against Rafa. Out. I remember thinking back then 15. that there was not going to be an untrodden region of his brain in terms of what he could get out of his tennis. He has improved himself year on year on year and things that he was very uncomfortable doing at the start of his career, but he knew they were the right things to do. He did. And he is definitely at the moment able to explore more of the court than his opponent. Drop shots, serve and volley, slice. 13. He's able to expose 15. those weaknesses in his opponents as well because of those things. 
And I think if you go back in his career and you look, he, he brought in a variety of different coaches to work on different aspects of his game. was always there 14, as the, the stable main guy but he brought in he brought in Mark Woodford for a while to work on volleys he brought in Todd Martin for a while to work on serve Gorin now as part of the team he's always exploring always looking for ways to get better Game. and he can't get much better than this Four straight games, having dropped his opening service game of this second set, fully in charge. 4-1. Well, it is still a terrific evening here in terms of the crowd, the atmosphere, as Novak starts to turn the screw. And the situation is looking a little desperate for Daniel. And in these moments, it does no good to airbrush reality or maintain a, a falsified ideal he's going to have to do something a little bit different here he doesn't mind throwing and serving volleying at these kind of moments when he Thank feels you. completely out of it he did it in the world tour finals against team turned it around he was down a set and almost a break there before the servant volley saved him Foul. out I think one thing with that, though, also much different, uh, much different returning position in general. More of an opportunity to to see the ball and also to have openings to to volley into. Thirteen. You got to remember here also this this score line is always a little bit misleading. He's only down one break here. If he can get through this game, and he's just got to find his way, he's got to find his way back into the match a little bit right now. Was down that break before in the first set. Fought back even. This right now is exactly what the doctor ordered for this game. Out. Game. Put your attentions on returning here. He's got to, but Mark, you're 100% you're correct. He's got to find some way to break through the armor of Novak Djokovic, whether it's doing something different or he's got to raise his own level, but. He's got to put some pressure here. He needs to, needs to get this break back as quickly as possible if he can. Not easily done, obviously. Racket out of his hand, maybe he can take the air out of his lungs. He's gonna have to. But for me, I see the evolution of Daniel Medvedev's game being coming in behind that forehand down the line in that point. He did some serious damage with that ball, but he he's just not comfortable yet coming forward and following that kind of shot in. said about his progress in all facets of the game in all areas of the game he is now comfortable in that habitat up at net to do the right things overhead half volley volley in that point it's basically a, a training program right there for coming forward
accuracy 14, is unnerving. 15. And they're both winning a high percentage of points when they make their first serve in. I think one of the biggest differences has been that Novak's winning 67% when he has to hit a second serve. Sometimes Novak likes to get through these games quite quickly. He is taking his time here. Fully aware of the importance of this point. Please. Sometimes the more yes. times he bounces the ball, it becomes it becomes almost a headache for the guy returning serve. He goes on and on with the bounce, but that's when he really zones in and concentrates on that. But a big point to win that was for Medvedev. in his head that, that, that Novak is bouncing the ball an incredible number of times before he serves. He's well within the time. He's still got 11 seconds left. <laughs> and that was the build up to brilliance as Medvedev's racket gets broken. He'll need to break back if he's to try and salvage this second set. Novak, 5-2. Sometimes he is a bit of a ticking time bomb, isn't he? I mean, he's been so passive in his thought process that it seems tonight, but it was the bouncing of the ball, I feel sure of it. Uh, he felt like it threw his rhythm off, and all of a sudden, he just snapped. So, although when he picked up the broken frame and put it behind his chair, you know, he was back to normality, I think. He certainly got something off his chest, though, in terms of being annoyed by his opposition. That could have gone anywhere. He had lost control of it. The red mist had descended for the Russian. You can hit that tennis ball around the corner with that, but you're not going to hit it too straight. <laughs> I mean, I think sometimes as a player, you, you, yeah. you, you need to relieve that tension. Yeah. You, you need to. We, we all feel like breaking a racket is such a negative, but I mean, I think sometimes you're better off doing that than you are just continuing to hold it Thank inside you. and not let the emotion Thank out. Thank you. We'll see how it affects him here playing this first point or two of this game. He's certainly no neg more negative now, isn't he, with his body language. He's, he was so strong mentally until maybe just a few mains, uh, games ago. Well, that was a 
bit of a semi playing, semi not playing type point through that drop shot in kind of. Yeah, I think it's a sign he's just frayed at the edges a little bit at the moment, isn't he? When he starts when he starts jabbering a bit at his box, it's not a good sign. He's looked over there a couple times. Let's second serve. Well, Francisca Jose, who he worked with through uh, a couple of years in China, sort of taper this temperament without losing the fire that you need as a competitor, did wonders for him. Fault. Please. Out. But he might need a bit more time on the couch. Yeah, he's in he's in serious 15, trouble now. 14. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a mini implosion, hasn't it? He's can, he's given Novak a real opening. Out. Contributed to this. 13, 14. You're not going to beat Novak Djokovic if you're not 100% focused. Oh. Yeah, Novak would love to take this game and start serving third. He's... Two sets to love. He has a stranglehold on the final. What you were saying before, Mark, you know, it's, it's part of just the aura of Novak Djokovic as one of, and potentially down the road, the, the greatest player in our game. And where the guys like Daniel Medvedev have to be able to stay with him also on the mental side of the game. Just as important as ball striking. And he started to lose that and lost it as we got to the end of that second set. It's going to be interesting to see here if he can gather himself and find that ideal competition state again for himself. to draw on that experience he had at the US Open a few years ago, guys, where he didn't win, but he did make an almighty fight of it from two sets to love down in a final. How good is this serving? Should Medvedev try and get out of his usual sort of court position here, Brad, and get up on the baseline to try and shrink the service box a bit. Or even go further back. I think he has to he has to move a little bit. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him move left or right, give Novak a little bit of a different look. I think his court position, where he's from, is where he's most comfortable. And as you said, you know, maybe he has to get out of his comfort zone a little bit here and there, but Novak's been serving extremely well, but I also feel that Danielle has not been returning to the standard that we've seen him through most of the tournament. Whether that's the the pressure 15, of the moment or 14. Novak is is just targeting the serve that much better than the other guys that we've seen him compete against. Well, this is a beacon of hope here for Medvedev. Two double faults in this game from Djokovic out of nowhere. Wow. Uh, that, that second serve crawled over the net. Uh, I couldn't have been much shorter 14. in the box. <laughs> Both of us sat up. We didn't think it was going to clear the net from here. And suddenly serving at 131Ks. No racket head acceleration. He's got to capitalize on this, Medvedev. Yes. 
I just don't like it when Daniel starts looking at his box. Brad, you mentioned it. It, it, it just interrupts his, his concentration levels. He's, he's complaining nearly every ball now. Yeah, Fitz, we, and we saw it really come to a head in the match that he played against Filip Krajanovic, where his coach, Jill Savara, actually made a decision to get up and leave the box. Just felt that he, he was creating more of a disturbance than he was helping his player by being there. And so he literally got up and, and walked out. in a Grand Slam round of 16 match. And you think if he was ever going to break him, two double faults from Novak would be the time to do it. And uh, he still couldn't break through, so he's got everything ahead of him now he, he first of all has to get back to the mentality he had at the start of the match if he doesn't do that this match will be over before he knows it You can see Novak sensing it also. It's like he's sitting where you are, Fitzy, and talking to you about it. He knows exactly what's going on here. He knows that he can get to this kind of a ball, and he can make him hit another ball, and he can make him hit another ball, that it's just that much more likely that Medvedev's going to fall apart. Yeah, Novak's playing quickly, too, on the return. He's ready early because Medvedev plays quickly, and Novak doesn't have a problem with that at the moment because he knows the guy's unsettled. He's happy for him to continue playing quickly and, and unravel. And he is unraveling here. Like I said, though, that, that was one way that he rolled the dice in Cincinnati and got himself out of a, a, a similar kind of hole, even though it was sort of a best of three compared to a best of five, but it was similar, and he made every one. And he said afterwards, he said it was just a calculated risk. I was getting beaten from the back, and I had to keep the point short. And on that day, in Ohio, it worked. I'm just not sure it's going to be enough tonight here in Melbourne. You're going to see Please. Novak fight his tail off to make a return right here. just exceptional his ability to see a tennis ball and then return it with interest Please. Oh. this is one of those games where Novak just won't let the game go he may lose this point. He'll come back to the due side. He'll find a way. He'll he'll stay in this game and fight for every single point because he senses the moment. Yeah, he's, he is unravel. That, that ball toss on the juice point, the second serve, was he just rushed it. He threw it low. It, it didn't have a normal trajectory, and he tried to smash it. He's he's just lost his focus and concentration. And Novak, the great champion he is and the competitor he is, is just letting him do it. And he's not stopping his rhythm in doing it. Letting him play fast and lose points quickly. It'll be interesting to see here, Fitz, as, as Petch 
alluded to earlier, sometimes Novak, even on his own service games, Mark said he likes to get through these games quickly. That's not a discussion of him playing the points themselves fast. It's in between the points. He gets the balls very quickly from the ball kids. He basically does it in a way to try and smother the other guy and not give him a chance to breathe whatsoever. Try to get through these games, as Mark said, quickly. Press the lead as we see him again already here. He's starting to got the ball very quickly from the ball kid up to the line, ready to serve. given Djokovic trouble. He's won three out of the last four meetings. He's actually today bidding to become just the 11th player to win four or more times against Novak. I won't go through all the other names, but there is only one player on that list that actually has a winning head-to-head -head record against Novak as well. And he was smart enough to get off the tour. That was Andy Roddick. He's just lost that desire to guts out those long points and stay stay in the point. He's he's going for too much at the wrong time. And Please, ladies and gentlemen, players are ready. His percentage has disappeared to a degree. Djokovic juggernaut rolls on. Three love, third set. Well, he's in a classic place here. You feel Medvedev as uh, much as you want him to kind of get it back together. If plan A doesn't work against the best players in the world, there usually isn't a plan B. Plan A isn't working, it's tough to find a successful plan B, that's for sure. And especially when you're, and you love that, just a, a little bit limited in, in what he can reach into his tool bag for. I agree, Brad, you know, like we talk about strategy, but if you can't be flexible enough with your tennis, you can't implement the strategy. You can sit there and look at a computer screen all you like, but you better be as good as Novak is with a tennis racket in your hand. Yeah, it's tough for him. He's not gonna start slicing everything or coming forward a ton. That's the moment he takes a three-love lead in the third set, just three games away from his ninth Australian Open title against the man, of course, who's on a 20-match winning streak. He himself came into this match, the Russian who'd forgotten how to lose. Twelve of those wins were against top tenors. Novak, of course, has put together those kind of streaks before. In fact, he's had 20 or more consecutive victories on six different occasions, Novak. One of those, of course, the epic 43 in a row. 
couple of wins in Davis Cup at the end of 2010 and of course all the way through 2011 until he lost to Federer at the French Open. They're amazing statistics. They're almost hard to believe at times. Yeah. 12 consecutive wins for Medvedev against top tenors. Novak, his best streak was 17. But he's put together three or more of around 14 as well. Dominance has been unreal. Facts are stubborn 15. things, and they're stacking up in this man's favor. from Novak here. Well, we're seeing a guy who's so mentally tough, uh, Djokovic, incredible. He, he's got the break in hand in this third set, and he's trying to put the nail in the coffin really um, it just goes to show how tough it is you've got to be to compete with him and Zverev excuse me Medvedev was so strong the first set and a half but he hasn't been able to maintain the same mental capacity I mean that is a luminous bit of skill on its own no one's get but I mean that's a Phil Mickelson lob wedge Danielle was holding the racket by the very end. He slid the racket to the end of his fingertips to get to that ball. Not sure whether he's complaining about the tension in his racket there. He keeps hitting the strings, but... Please. I don't think it really matters how many times Novak bounces the ball right now. Could be two or 17. Medvedev's going to be irritated from losing the points. He just hasn't been able to maintain Novak's level for long enough, has he? Not many can. Well, exactly. It's a tough school, that one. off of that return is unworldly.
Well, whether the forehand slash return was an indication of just how little confidence he has in his forehand or whether it was the introduction of something new, I'm not quite sure. But that is not going to trouble Djokovic. Still coming away with nothing. 4 1, Djokovic. Well, the time he spends looking after his body through obviously the way that he eats, the way that he stretches, is just pays dividends time and time again in those moments. A couple of times there. They're subtle, aren't they? But ultimately they win him the point more often than not yeah, we almost take for granted yep. some of the things that he's capable of doing because we've seen him so often so regularly from him but the flexibility on some of those defensive shots when he goes to the full slide it, it's crazy actually I wonder if we can get Fitzy to show that afterwards we could illustrate it get throw a few balls to Fitzy wide I think if Fitzy tried to slide like that on a hard court, we'd have to take him to the hospital. What, if anything, can this man do? That's what he's playing for. He's desperate to get his name engraved on one of those trophies. Golf between them Thank is you. real, and it's big. Novak's brought him forward a, a reasonable amount, hasn't he? And initially, I thought it was because he was having a bit of trouble at the end of rallies, Novak, and maybe it was a cop-out, but I don't think so. He, he, he's deliberately bringing him forward. See, I think it's been a, I think it's been a strategic, 13. tactical play that 15. he's employed since the start of the match, and and in many of his matches, it's something that he does very regularly now. Whether he whether he takes the backhand short angle cross court, whether he drops it down the line, one of his favorite plays. But he tries to draw the guys forward. Second serve. Out. 14, 15. Problems, of course, compounded for Medvedev in these kind of moments when you're playing against somebody that's already won eight of these titles, 17 majors overall. 
out. It's that you can't even hope that they can get tight at the finishing line. They know how to close. They're lethal when they see the finishing line. We have no, we have no concept whatsoever that Novak would get tight trying to close this type of a match out. If Daniel Medvedev were in this exact position, we would be talking about something differently. But with Novak, Please. He can. Oh, there it is. Goran standing. Deservedly so. Look where he hit the volley from behind the service line. How complete a player he is. Bit of a statement backhand that one from Everdeer. One of the best shots he's hit for a while, to be honest. Signs of life. execution he absolutely has to have if he wants to stay competitive in the match. Thank you. Thank you. tonight as he dampened down the aspirations of Medvedev with a clinical first serve. Facet Djokovic. Medvedev throwing everything he's physically Please. got at him here. He keeps coming back. Please.
defiance. Utter determination. Djokovic looking to be the king in Australia once again. but what an era it's been for the players that have come in to this era of crowded greatness. Next gen, lost gen, any gen. <laughs> Which gen? Exactly. Samuel Beckett's quote, of course, on Stan Wawrinka's arm tattooed, fail again, fail better. I think they should have just picked that, that generation and the next one being born into the big three. Despair young and never look back because they are just a different league altogether mentally tactically technically unstoppable time at that point was a statement from novak we saw him early on trying to target the forehand but there he was just saying i'm just better than you period Novak nears his target, a ninth title here in Melbourne. Please, ladies and gentlemen. Well, beauty needs no resume, and although this evening is going to add to this man's illustrious resume, it has been a picture-perfect performance. Thank you. Second serve. Please. Please keep it fair, ladies and gentlemen. Targeted the forehand time and time again tonight, and once again he extracts an error. Thank you, thank you. And he has championship point. Thank you. Novak 
is nine Australian Open titles. The world number one, majestic in Melbourne again. And what a fitting way to do it on the final point as well. Another inch perfect return. And he closes it out at the net. One of the greatest players of all time. And never forget, he's one of the most complete. He just broke him down. We thought after Medvedev was able to get back out of that first set, get even at 3-0, and, and it was going to be a, a real battle, but Novak was having none of that. Medvedev just unable to stay with him at that level. Just couldn't keep it up. Fitzy when he got injured in his match against Fritz. There's no way any of us, and I'm sure not even he, thought he was going to be reliving another title here.